Earlier this month, the Senate Budget Committee took an important first step toward tax reform by approving a fiscal year 2018 budget resolution focused on growing America's economy through tax policies that put more money in the hands of hardworking Americans. This week, we take the next step as the Senate begins debating the budget blueprint to pursue long overdue tax relief for families and job creators that will jumpstart economic growth. It's crucial that Congress approve this fiscal framework in order to eliminate the dated and stifling tax policies that are holding back American investments and productivity. As Budget Committee Chairman, I'm proud that Congress and the President are tackling these important issues. After eight years of stagnant growth, it's clear that our nation needs a simpler, fairer, and more transparent tax system that will leave more dollars in the pockets of hardworking families. The last time Congress was able to accomplish large-scale tax reform was in 1986. Just think how much has changed in the country and the world in those 31 years, including our tax code. America's tax laws are incredibly complicated and work to slow our economy and hurt American families. Incredibly, our current tax system actually benefits foreign-based companies while harming U.S. headquartered companies and employers. And we continually ask why jobs are leaving this country. A big reason is the hostile tax landscape. The Senate budget aims to help reverse this trend by setting the stage for pro-growth tax reform that will lower taxes on American families and on job creators by a net $1.5 trillion over 10 years. By keeping more money in the pockets of hardworking taxpayers, these reforms, if done right, will boost investment, will boost wages, and will boost productivity here at home. Pro-growth tax reform should reward hard work, reward savings, encourage investment. It should broaden the tax base while lowering the marginal tax rates, streamline our tax laws, and limit government distortion of market-based decisions. Our tax policy should provide for a globally competitive corporate tax rate and an international tax system that does not penalize U.S. companies. It's no secret that tax policies influence the everyday dollars and cents decisions of individuals and small businesses. They help drive such decisions as whether to work an additional hour or invest an additional unit of capital. This is why economic experts note that potential economic growth should always be considered when talking about tax cuts. In fact, the Joint Committee on Taxation states, quote, tax policy can directly influence the level of labor supply, physical capital, human capital, and technology in an economy by changing the after-tax returns to certain economic activities or changing the cost of pursuing such activities, end quote. Pro-growth reform that removes government distributions of the marketplace would also allow for resources to be reallocated from what produces the best tax outcome to what's the best economic use. This efficiency will lead to increased investment, increased growth of businesses, and higher economic output, or gross domestic product, GDP. In fact, increasing GDP from private sector growth can provide additional dollars to the Treasury. Let me repeat that. Better tax policy will boost the value of everything we produce, and this will mean more revenue for the federal government. According to the Congressional Budget Office, a one-tenth of a percentage point increase in productivity could increase revenue in the Treasury by $273 billion over a 10-year period. That's a one-tenth of a percentage point increase in productivity, producing $273 billion over a 10-year period. A return of our historic average growth 
would decrease projected spending deficits by over $2 trillion in the 10-year window, more than enough to pay for the decrease in revenues assumed under static scoring conventions that don't account for economic growth. That's what we have to operate under. In addition to the Senate's budget key role in reforming the tax code, it is a serious fiscal plan. If Congress and the administration can adhere to this blueprint, we'll be taking steps to get our fiscal house in order with a combination of restrained spending, reduced tax burdens, and a growing economy. The Senate Budget Committee has put together a responsible budget that provides a path to creating a more effective, efficient, and accountable government for hardworking taxpayers. To accomplish this goal, the budget proposes five and one-tenths trillion in savings over the next 10 years, while investing in a strong national defense, providing for the care of most vulnerable citizens, and not touching Social Security. From the start, this budget was focused on achieving on-budget balance by the end of the 10-year budget window. By 2026, the resolution with ensuing economic growth from tax reform and an improved regulatory landscape will generate a $79 billion on-budget surplus. This surplus would rise to $197 billion by 2027. In addition to the fiscal reforms proposed by this resolution, it also continues efforts to respond to concerns about the broken budget process. This budget promotes curtailing budget gimmicks, increasing honesty and accuracy by government scorekeepers, and ending the spend now, pay later mentality of Washington. It's also important to note that the thorough and robust committee process that produced this Senate budget resolution. More than 150 amendments from both sides were filed, and 29 were voted on during our day-long markup process. This budget reflects bipartisan input and includes five amendments that were accepted from Democratic members of the committee. The next step for tax reform will build on the Budget Committee's open and transparent committee process. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Senate Finance Committee Chairman Orrin Hatch have promised that tax reform legislation will also move through the committee process. In other words, any speculation people have heard about where the tax is is not right because it has a process to go through. This will provide Finance Committee members the opportunity to offer amendments during the full, before the full Senate considers the legislation. So it will be considered in committee and then on the floor. Once the bill moves to the Senate floor, every member will be able to offer amendments before voting on the measure. Mr. President, this budget serves as a framework to expand economic opportunity for each and every American. It reflects our belief in the American entrepreneurial spirit and that by allowing American families and small businesses to keep more of their hard-earned dollars, they will innovate and invest the money in ways that will grow our economy. We believe that our nation's best days and those of its citizens are ahead of us. The time to act is now. If we don't change course, our nation will continue to experience the sluggish economic growth of the last decade. I urge my colleagues from both sides of the aisle to support America's hardworking families and employers and help put our nation on a better course. Approving this budget focused on pro-growth tax reform does just that.